Welcome to podcast number six, the cytoskeleton and the structure and function of the cell wall. We're going to start off with the cytoskeleton. The first function of the cytoskeleton is it will support the shape of the cell. Uh, basically what the cytoskeleton will do, will create a framework of which the cell contents are arranged within. The second thing is that it will transport the materials around the cell in a process called cytoplasmic streaming. Uh, cytoplasmic streaming is basically when you have this situation. All right, there we go. All right, so you got a cell here. And let's say we've got a mitochondrion. And they kind of have this little strip. Okay, what will happen is that this thing here may move. It may rotate around the cell like this. Okay, that is caused by the cytoplasm. Or I'm sorry, the, the cytoskeleton. Now, what will happen here is that this these would be proteins, and this mitochondrion would kind of ride it like a monorail would at Disneyland. You ever seen those old trains that ride on that one rail, a monorail? And that's what it would do. So it would move around, and that is controlled by the cytoskeleton. All right. There are two protein filaments that make up the cytoskeleton. So you want to remember that the cytoskeleton is made out of proteins. These two parts of the cytoskeleton are called the microfilaments. Micro means small, filaments mean thread. These guys are tiny threads. Okay, let's write that in here. Micro means small, so these guys are tiny threads. All right, the type of thread that they're made out of is a type of protein called actin. And this is what's used during that cytoplasmic streaming that I explained just a little bit earlier. The second part is microtubules. Micro meaning small, tubules meaning tubes. So these guys are basically tiny tubes. And they're made out of a creatively named protein called tubulin. Get it? Tubulin makes tiny tubes. And this is what's going to maintain the cell shape. Now, Microtubules are also used to make the mitotic spindle, which will be used during mitosis. This is going to help separate the chromosomes during prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Uh, microtubules are also used to make cilia and flagella. And both of these guys, and we're going to learn about this in just a little bit, these guys are made, uh, it's an arrow, these guys are mainly used for movement. Uh, the most familiar one you'll be with is the flagella, which you would find on a sperm cell. All right, moving on. Okay, in this diagram, we've got a picture of the cytoskeleton. Slide this up a little bit. All right, remember microtubules were tiny tubes? So it looks like a little straw. And then, see all these yellow fibers right here? These are your microfilaments. So if you put these two together, you have kind of a scaffolding. And what uh, science has found that there will be a little protein that will straddle. So that kind of straddles there. So let's pick a different color. Let's use red. Okay, as you can see here, this protein will straddle that, and then this mitochondrion will slide along in here, and then these actin and fibers will contract. All right. And you notice how there's all these little ribosomes here. Remember, ribosomes are used to make proteins. And so these ribosomes would have made the proteins, you know, the actin and the tubulin, that would have created both of these guys. Okay? You also notice that what kind of ER do we have right here in red? All this stuff right up in here. You can see the ribosomes on them. So that's the rough ER. Once again, makes more proteins, and these proteins would have been made, used to make these microtubules and these uh, uh, microfilaments. All right. So there's your cytoskeleton. All right, things that are related to the cytoskeleton would be a centriole. Centriole is an organelle that's going to help create the mitotic spindle. It's often just referred to as the spindle during cell division. All right, now here's one thing you want to make sure that you, you get. Whoops, let's go back. I went too fast. Come on. There we go. Okay, these guys are found only in animal cells. You will not find a centriole in a plant cell. No plant cells. Now, one of the things you want to remember here, this 9 by 3 pattern, that's the arrangement of microtubules. And you're going to compare that with the one that's different in uh, cilia and flagella. Now, right, if you got a picture coming up, it's going to show you what this pattern is. All right, remember it was a 9 by 3? Let's go ahead and write this in there. It's a 9 by 3. 
Okay, basically what this means is, is you have nine triplets. So there will be nine triplets of microtubules in one of these centrioles. One, two, three, there's your triplet. And if you count them up, there'll be nine of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's the ninth one. And these guys often show up to be perpendicular to each other. So you can see this picture of them right here. Uh, if you were to make a, a cell, 3D cell model, I always envision, envision these as being two Twizzlers that were perpendicular to it. You know those little Twizzler bites? Okay. Now remember, centrioles, they are going to make the mitotic spindle. Mitotic referring to, whoops, nice spelling. Mitotic referring to mitosis. Okay. So when we get into chapter 10, we're going to come back to these guys. All right, what the heck are cilia and flagella? Cilia and flagella are cell structures that are used in movement. And they're very similar to a centriole, with the exception that their microtubules are arranged a little bit different. They are arranged in what is known as a 9, let's use this color, as a 9 by t plus 2 pattern. There will be 9 things with 2 things in the middle. Okay, These guys are attached to the cell or cell or plasma membrane. Remember, cell membrane and plasma membrane are the same thing. Now, pay attention to this one that's in green right here. These guys are used for moving the cell through its environment. That would be cilia and flagella. So like cilia, you'd find those, and like your paramecia that you would find in pond water. That helps them swim through the pond water. And then flagella, which you would find on E. coli, you're also going to find it on sperm cells. Or the cilia is going to be used to move materials past the cell. Uh, you'll find this in a type of um, pond organism called stentor. It filters water past the mouth parts. Uh, you're also going to find this in your um, respiratory tract. This helps push mucus up through your bronchial tubes and into your throat so that you'll swallow the mucus. It happens during the day. You don't even notice that you're swallowing mucus. All right. Now, here's the differences. Flagella, these guys are longer and fewer than number. Oftentimes there's only one, but there could be three or four. Cilia, on the other hand, they are shorter and much more numerous. There will be thousands of them. As you can see in this picture, we're going to show you the structures. All right. So as you can see here, this could either be a cilia or flagella. It doesn't make any difference. And remember how we had the 9 plus 2 structure? There were going to be 9 triplets. Or I'm sorry, 9 doublets. So the doublets would be spelled like this. There will be 9 doublets plus 2 in the middle. So we'll count here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And there's the 2 in the middle. 9 plus these two. All right. Now you see this basal body down here? This is, we're going to say this one's a flagellum. This is where this flagellum is going to attach to the cell membrane. That basal body has the same arrangement as a central. It would be a 9 by 3 arrangement. All right. You see these, these uh, microtubules right here? What's going to happen is this microtubule, we'll say that's that little one. And then we'll say this is the big one, the wider one right there. Well, what happens is that these guys will slide back and forth from each other. So you'll get this kind of motion. So as this red one slides down and as this red one slides up, that's going to make this thing go back and forth. And that's how these things move. So that'll be how the little sperm cell will, will, will swim its way towards the ovum, is that these microtubules are sliding back and forth from each other. All right. All right, what the heck is a cell wall? The cell wall is a rigid structure that surrounds some cells. For example, bacteria, fungi, and plants. You will not find a cell wall in an animal cell. What's its job? It's going to provide protection and support. It's also going to be found outside of the cell or plasma membrane. All right? Now, the cell wall doesn't really keep materials from going in and out. It's just there to help support it, to give it some protection, to give it some strength. All right, now, 
Bacterial cell walls are made out of a structure called peptidoglycan. Peptidoglycan is telling you what it's made out of. Peptido refers to protein. And the glycan part refers to carbohydrate. So basically it's made out of proteins and carbohydrates, mainly carbohydrates. And as you can see it, this is this thick blue stuff right there. So you're going to find it. All right, you're going to find it right there on the, this is probably an E. coli structure. All right, the next type of organism is a fungus. This is a picture of a yeast cell. And what a fungus cell wall is made out of is chitin. It's mainly a carbohydrate, very similar to cellulose. And as you can see here, it's going to help protect this yeast cell. All right, the next cell would be a plant cell. And everybody's going to know that a plant cell's cell wall should be made out of cellulose. Cellulose and chitin have a very, very similar cell structure. And as you can see here, this is what gives this plant cell some strength and rigidity. Uh, the paper that you might be writing down your notes on is made out of cellulose. Uh, wood is nothing made out of cellulose. So all of these plant cell walls have a major, major important job in our society because it, it helps create wood, which houses and all kinds of stuff are made out of. All right, we are going to pause right there because that's going to be our next podcast. So thanks for viewing and stay tuned for the next one.